Hey guys, John G, Modern Design Aquascaping. Our team builds custom ponds, fountains, and waterfalls out of natural stone and wood. My goal, educate and inspire the entire planet about ponds and water features. Thanks for joining me back. Today's video is back to the water feature design series. I want to teach you about how we install an overflow in a large scale water feature. What my ideas are and what I'll probably do different next time in order to make it better and better. Some key factors on this overflow that I'm gonna point out right off the beginning. The uh, intake bay from the pond comes in here. Water flow sweeps nicely around and it goes this way. Into the back, all your suction lines for your pumps are back here in the backside. The reason that I chose to put the drain in the location that we chose is because of leaf matter. A lot of times what happens is the floating garbage in a large scale water feature covers the drain and then it does not work. Obviously it creates a problem. So I thought in this water flow on this feature, if we tuck the drain off to the side outside of the actual flow of water, debris won't be so encouraged to go into it. So what's gonna happen is the majority of the debris is gonna go that way. It's gonna follow the current back into the back where the major suction is. There's even a skimmer in the back back there to help pick up surface debris. As the water level goes up, it will seep into that area so our method of installation is that basin is set two inches below water level and the reason for that is because we're going to come back in with flagstone and we're going to mortar some thin flat work right around the outside of that that will put it up to exactly water level and then the water will slide and drop right in we don't like using cobblestones or river rocks or anything like that in those areas because i don't want anything that's going to trap leaves and stuff we want to maintain perfect elevations for the overflow. The designer creation is, before we put the liner in, the soil is bermed up at an angle, so we create this kind of beachy area coming in from the deeper water, and then it's a big flat that's tamped out right exactly where we want it, two inches below water level. Then you've got this guy that is dug in to the earth, straight into the dirt, that thing goes, and the drain runs back to where the drain runs to. There's a four inch overflow into the drainage system there. Then what happens is the pond liner comes right over top of this drain box and up the drain is simply cut it's a compression fitting if it leaks a little bit right there around the edge it doesn't matter because it's at water level but it's not going to because that lid is compression fit down into the liner the box has basically got this thing sandwiched in between it works kind of like a skimmer connection but without the silicone I would like to have a metal grate in there with a little wider gaps but we cut out the every other one of the pieces in the type of drain lid that we had to work with. So when you look at this thing at the end, it's nicely rocked around. The lid of this is set two inches below water level. The flat work is gonna cover this up. And then you got a nice beach area. The debris is pushing this way. The water overflow comes up and just sneaks right back into here. That guy can handle a lot of water. This is a huge water feature. It's almost a million gallons. It's like 800,000, I think, is where we're currently at on our guesstimation. But yeah, I'm gonna take you over over here talk about what I do differently if I could do this over again super important that I always try to think what will I do different better next time answer a second overflow the surest way to not let your overflow get clogged is to have two of them I could put one in the very back of the intake where all the debris pulls into and I could put another over to the side of the intake it would be very simple for me to form and pour concrete and make those basins at the proper height and then just fold the liner right over top of them and do the same type of compression seal. Guys, that's what I've got on how we install an overflow on a large scale water feature. Do me a favor, hit me up down there in the bottom. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe to our channel. Any info that you have, ideas, questions, whatever, type them in down there. I'll get back to you. It might take me a while. I do projects like this. I'm here every day for three weeks straight. So sometimes it takes me a month to answer my people, but I answer. I always get back. So stay with us. Thanks for joining the Adams family. Thanks for doing things that matter with people that matter, cool water features, and stay tuned for more episodes of the Water Feature Design Series by John G. Out.